if you had to give up one of your senses, what would it be? Everyone's going to say smell. 73% of the time someone says, what's that smell? It's said with a very negative connotation. Today, we're going to try and turn, the, turn things around. We're going to mention how smell doesn't quite stink. Join us. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. Alrighty. Whoa. Nice. Interesting mask. Did you know skeletons are the only creatures that have no sense of smell? No sense of smell. Mm-hmm. But they have no a, se- a they have a smell themselves, right? Yes, they do. <laughs> is there anything that doesn't have a smell? Is that do we do enough research to know that on off the fly <laughs> on the fly? I don't think we did. Space. Mm. We'll get into later Vacuum lack of particles. Did you know, while we're on it, well, first, I'd love to start with a Wikipedia definition. Thanks for joining us, folks. We're talking about smell today. Mm-hmm. You know, so if one of your friends is like, we're going to the bathroom, do you guys want to, means do you want to smell some cool smells in the bathroom? <laughs> I say go with them. Smell, uh, by definition, is the faculty or power of perceiving odors or scents by means of the organs in the nose. Olfaction. It still doesn't really tell us what smell is. That's like literally saying smell. It's being able to smell. Yeah, it's what particulate that's been kicked up in the air, and you, you, you have what receptors that catch those and bind to them, and then you figure out what combination of those things is actually the thing you're smelling. It has to be an odor. So I looked up odor. Do you Odors. know what an odor is? Oh, I do. A lingering quality, impression, or feeling attached to something. Something that inhibits smell. I was like, that's not fair either. That's like going back to yeah. smell. Smell, scent, or aroma. That smells. Fragrance. Yeah. What are those things? Do we even know? Ooh. Should have done it's more. a chemical compound. That's what we can all agree on. Almost all of the ones we can smell are carbon based. Did you come across this in your big research here today? Uh, I most certainly did not. <laughs> <laughs> They surmise there are over 100,000 um, chemical compounds that can make up unique smells. So wait, are always coming up with new ones, though. Uh-huh. There were a base uh, seven, right? There's So these are the base seven. There's musky, which is like a, a perfume or an aftershave. Putrid, which is like something rotten. Mm. Sulfurous. Pungent, like a vinegar. Uh, camphoraceous. Mothballs. I, don't, mm. I know the smell of mothballs, but it, I don't know how to describe it. Good point. Ethereal, uh, dry cleaning fluid. I guess it's like an after effect, maybe like an ozone, like lightning. Okay. Fresh I morning. Know what ozone smells like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I assume that's ethereal. Uh, floral, like roses, and then pepperminty, like peppermint. <laughs> smells smell like smells. <laughs> By definition, peppermint. <laughs> Interesting. No, I didn't know that. So I guess any combination herein can have. Some has more of this, some has more of that. Yeah, and I guess <coughs> it's the, the interplay between smells that you can decipher something like, so you said 100,000. I heard there's like uh, like 10,000 different types, and then there's combinations that push it up to uh, like a maximum amount. Okay. So any reason why humans smell the way they do? Smell the verb or the noun? The verb. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I know we can, we're going to get into a lot of stuff we smell and the reasons we smell. 
Why? What was the first one? Came so across. it was like a comparison between like humans and other mammals and other mammals. Like some of them have like dogs can have a very defined sense of smell and mm-hmm. broader than ours or more uh, delicate. More delic- broad and more focused. Yeah, more focused as well. But most mammals aren't that way. Most mammals don't have the sense of smell that we do. And they say that because we were like cookers and creators of things that we could combine things together and see how they smelled. Mm-hmm. So our creativity made our smell blossom. Hmm. So people who could smell better could make better foods, could make better nutrients, could mm-hmm. find better nutrients, could find better foods, could find better raw ingredients. Interesting. Yeah. Promote their um, gene pool by smelling better. Mm. Verb and noun. Mm. You uh, you mentioned something with the size of the brain. So human's brain, um, all this goes on in the olfactory cortex? Yeah. Olfactory, very small. olfactory bulb. It's because it, the bulb is the sensor above the uh, memory yeah. in your nose. But it ties into the limbic system, right? Like, there's parts it of does. your brain that are all interconnected, and just because one part is focused on smells doesn't mean that your whole brain isn't working to figure out smells. Right? I think so. Limbic. I what I'll do limbic. is I'll break down the, the physical stuff. Like, if you would go through, this is how hearing works, this is how this works, so yeah. smell. All these... Um, these odors they're usually um molecules they're called ligands mm. they're uh they detach from things like whether it's a, a piece of cheese you're looking at ligands come off it's little parts of the cheese that actually come off enter your nose this whole area is called the there's a funny word that begin with n and i left that i didn't write it down like near the nair something as, an, as a name your nostrils have a scientific name nair maybe n-a-r-e nostrils Anine. Yeah, scientific name for like your nostril area, like this this area right here, folks. Anyway, it goes in here, it walks around, and somewhere right around back here, there's like a nasty mucousy membrane area called the uh, the olfactory mucosa, baby. Olfactory mucosa. So like the the one mm-hmm. the one thing I read was that you're I don't even know if I read this. I kind of made it up. I think that if you don't have any moisture in your nose, is it impossible to smell? I don't know about impossible. It does make it a lot harder, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. Because that's why we have mucus in general. A, it attaches to things that shouldn't be in there. But B, this area right here, it's mucusy. It's sticky. It's kind of like liquidy. It's gross. So these ling- these lingering um, ligands or molecules from an item, they come in here, and they go right in here in the moist area, and they get stuck in there. But when they're kind of stuck in here, certain re- we have millions and billions of receptors up there. They're called olfactory uh, cilia. And they, certain ones are shaped certain ways. So what they do is they attach to a molecule, and if it's the kind of molecule that they react to, they react hard to it. And they actually break it down and start to absorb parts of it. And it makes like their cilia shake in a certain way, and it travels up to the olfactory bulbs, which are on the other side, like more towards your brain in your head. So the only uh, words I could mm-hmm. come up with that kind of sound like, so there's the, like, rhinoceros, there's a rhinonun, rhinonun, rhinon, rhinon, you know. Five-letter word. Yeah, it's, it's pretty short. And then limonese, because it sounds something like something else that's really bad. Mm-mm. But I guess that doesn't yeah. fit your description of... No, it was like a the... five-letter word, and it was like, I don't know if it refers to this thing, I guess, like your nostril, but a scientific term, it made me crack up. Someone in the comments, please clarify. Anyway, these smells literally go up into your nose. They get caught in the mucus here, and then your the cilia and receptors are all like, hey, that's one I recognize, and they grab it, and they pull it up, and they vibrate a certain way, and it goes to the olfactory bulbs, which, guess what? They're hanging right next to the mitral cells. Huh. How crazy is that? A mitral, mitral cell is actually a, uh, a neuron. Huh. They're the only neurons that aren't in the brain. They're like right above their push down a little towards your nose huh. so neurons are fast as hell yeah so they transfer all this information directly in one line called the olfactory tract it's like the super highway it's just a shit ton of neurons from the olfactory so that's so that's like a weird that's weird science because someone who's smelling something it takes a long time for that smell to reach you and then it's a chemical thing that your your nose is picking it up and then you're like reacting like immediately so Fast. While smell is like a delayed reaction, the delayed reaction is super mm-hmm. fast. It's strange. Is that, that, I it guess is. that's the importance of smell. 
it's also the only sense I think tied directly to the brain. Everyone else has different parts of the brain it goes to and like receptors and core areas. Mm. This one, it hits right here. And because neurons are already here, it just fires right into the rest of the brain. I don't know. Well, your eyes because have... your optic nerve has to hit. No, it has to go to, um, there's an optic center back here that yeah, it has yeah. to translate it into a, an electronic signal, I think. Yeah, but the back of your eye is doing filtering and doing different things before it even gets to your brain. So there's like a whole set of stuff that goes on with your eyes. Right, there's more steps for all the other senses is what I'm saying. Okay, so you're saying this, the nose is more direct. Yeah, it's literally the just crosses the membrane and then, hey, we're talking right to the neurons. Let's hmm. fire it up. So would you say that like maybe your maybe sense of touch or smell is one of the first things that you get if you're like evolutionary step? I don't know. I actually think smells up there because it's so primitive, if that makes sense. And every well, other animals have to smell around. I don't know. Sight is probably number one, right? Yeah, I guess I'm imagining something crawling out of the sea and then evolving. It probably has to smelling its way around. <laughs> yeah, probably has to see and feel. You must do fish taste. I'm kind of curious now. Can fish taste stuff? They taste good. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do. They have the ability to distinguish between su sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. They're <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> They're stuck in a pool, and they're like, oh, I can't get this out of my mouth. <laughs> there was one more thing I was going to say about the whole science of it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I did not nope, distract you. you. <laughs> 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 uh, we'll get the rest of the episode. <laughs> Screw it. Um, hmm. So where are we going to go next after the scientific layout of how everything ties together? The brain? Um, why it happened? The brain? I forget. Oh, well, on that, that track to the brain, it goes right past the limbic system, or it it might even mm -hmm. use the limbic system, which mm -hmm. you touched on, yep, yep. which is our center for emotion and memory. Yep. So essentially, memory is the strongest tie to smell than I believe any other sense. Yeah, it um, it certainly is. It uh, so like <laughs> you, you, you froze, you, you froze with your eyes in like a weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I can't. Yeah, but I mean, everyone's had that moment where they they smell something from their childhood, and they're like, boom, they're right there. So like baking cookies, or you know, walking outside on a fresh snowy morning, those things come back to you immediately. You have some individual. Smells. Favorite smells. Individual but, smells. That singular smells. smells. Individual memory smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The smell of the apartment after a party when the beer has soaked into the carpet. That's pungent. Mm. That you can stale beer. Yeah. Stale beer. I can mixed with your apartment. Yeah. That's I could still see the the glean of the lights and then the naked person sleeping on the couch. Mm. 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 Could you smell them? No, could only smell the beer. Maybe that's the good part. Mm. <laughs> Maybe ignore the other parts of the the we scenario. We talked about uh, this one in the, the baby episode, cherub, the last a one. chubby cherub. Oh. <laughs> I was going with hockey glove smell. That's one of my favorite smells. Oh, hockey bad glove. Smell. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Everyone I knows. I hate it though. Poop. Does poop smell the same? I mean, there are some. There's varying degrees, but everyone knows that it smells like poop or something okay, that I, um, died a while ago. I did some research for you. I didn't think we were going to get here till later, but mm -hmm. did you know 70% of uh, the populace in a blind uh, inquiry likes to smell their own farts? Huh. I wonder if they were given their own fart and said, smell this, or if they, they like... They tried. Apparently, there's there's moral <laughs> dilemma. Uh, people <laughs> were giving them other people's farts to see if they really liked it. Like, yeah. there was a whole... It was a no go. It's so they a can the test. Yeah, Princess Bride, where he's swapping the <laughs> shots. They're swapping the fart smells. But apparently, because your gut flora is unique to you, it's mm. about as unique as your fingerprint, which we discussed in a previous episode. Huh. Also, unique to you is your own diet. So, your farts are really your unique smell. No one else has your exact fart. So, representation. And what's crazy of you. is. It's usually a smell that turns people off or fecal matter or farts or like it's 
it's kind of a nasty smell. But when you smell your own, you're like, ha that's mine. You, you recognize it. I'm just thinking how they could use that to identify you. It's like, can eyeball scan, fingerprint, fart into this jar fart right here. <laughs> fart into the jar, baby. <laughs> My boys are taking it back home. They're going to do some tests on it. Uh, yeah, that's his fart. Yep. But um, fart, did but... you know that they think that it's like that because you pass on half of your gut flora, et cetera, to your kids? Hmm. So your kids' fecal matter smells close to yours. And that's why you don't mind changing their diaper. That's a bullshit. I was like, that's not true. And then I was like, who knows? If I had to change some other kids' diapers, it would probably smell like awful, awful shit. I've or changed shit. some nasty diapers. and Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, but I'm saying, could you imagine changing someone else's kids' diapers? Might be even worse. I don't know. I've done that once, but I don't know that the poopy, like real, like nasty poopy, I don't think it... Let's... They didn't have a, a 10, a 1 to 10? Yeah, they had like maybe a 4, which is like no big deal. Hmm. So you touched on this. Did you know um, space might have a smell? Hmm. I, I, I heard this a while ago. So astronauts, when they come back in... It's metallic? Anytime they're, it's metallic? Yeah. Anytime they come in from outside the, the ship and come in and take off their uh, suits and put them in the room, whatever... They can smell their suits. They smell different after space than before space. Hmm. Same with any object they bring out with them. It smells like burnt, burning meat. Metallic smell. Weird. So I guess when you hmm. leave, all of the air around you just disappears. So you're only left with a vacuum of space and solar radiation. Sort of. It's I... supercharged particles in general whether it's solar radiation or other particles that are out there, and that once you bring them back into the air, they react with it and make some sort of a burning smell is what they think. Huh. I think. No one knows. That's creepy as fuck. That's... Right? I don't know if I could handle that. So hold on. If they take it one step further. Did you NASA talk to... I forget the name of it. It's a perfume guy. Mm. To make a perfume that smelled like space that they were using around the astronauts <laughs> during training. Oh, yeah. I didn't get to that part. We do, yeah, isn't that fascinating? We do have certified smellers. So those seven really? different types of smells that were defined, mm -hmm. they give them a test that has ten vials, and they have to d decipher which of the seven have which smells. Otherwise, they're no longer certified. I knew a f right. I have a friend who's a who's certified smeller. We use them for tests that were like for like trash bags, like they like a Teflon trash bag. Teflon doesn't have a smell, and uh, okay. they would seal it up and let it rot, and they would say what does it smell like and how bad does it smell? And they do it over a course of like several months because that's exactly what they do in orbit. They have to put the trash bag away and hope that the smell doesn't escape. Like what feces? Uh, they have all sorts of trash, not feces though. Feces gets in a different cycle. Right. Same thing with urine. Usually it's like food, that's what I figured. but food can smell just as bad uh, as feces in like, my opinion. Yeah. Apple core or something. And, a little bit of meat you couldn't finish. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Ooh. Can they bring meat up there? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You okay. irradiate so, food I, in I a can't... package, essentially. It's a little pouch. Okay. Hmm. Mylar pouch. Do you pouch. know why we have two nostrils? I read that you so... oscillate during the day. It goes left and right so that you breathe yeah. through one or the other. I don't know why that matters, though. Like, why would they do... Why? body why would they you do touched that? on it you literally touched on it so for everyone wondering with your ears you can tell whether a sound's coming from your left or your right because we have two far apart mm -hmm. eyes you get spatial reasoning like we know what's going on spatially um you only need one mouth because you only got to suck one you know what you get ahead in this world <laughs> and you got two nostrils because uh during the day one will always break down one is filled with too much mucus it's a very there's always overproduction of mucus, hmm. nostril, can barely breathe, like stuff. They get inflamed very easily. So what happens is some of these smells we were talking about earlier, and you touched on it, it's a time-related thing. It has to be timed just right so that the smell reaches and gets absorbed into this olfactory bulb. Otherwise, you're not going to smell it. Some hmm. molecules move too quick. So it'll go through the slower one and get absorbed. Others move too slow. So like... 
it, it needs huh. to be absorbed because the air moves too quick. So oh, it's so it's, it's restricting the it's flow into safeguard. either one. Oh, that's yeah. So it's like you know, if it don't work this way, it's going to work this way. It's pretty badass that the body does this on its own, and somehow the body figured it out. It's just like this is the way it's got to work. I mean, we really gave the body millions of years. Well, not millions, but hundreds of thousands of years, right? You're right. Our bodies are stupid. <laughs> I could figure it out in 100,000 years, body. You're an idiot. I just read this Wikipedia article. <laughs> Wikipedia article figured it out in a minute. Uh, in like a minute. Yeah. While we were also talking about space, um, we know what certain galaxies smell like. Like, you know, you see like a BuzzFeed article once every three months. Is that like, like an approximation? Big, of the smell they it like... is and it isn't apparently if all the mo- if we know almost all the molecules that make up a thing like um sagittarius b2 is made of ethyl formate um apparently that's a smell that's whether it's fermented in a natural occurring organic object or whatever can smell like raspberries or rum Ooh, so i want to go galaxy smells like one of the two deliciousness but it probably cool, kills right? you does it kill you Oh, um, you're in the vacuum of space. I'm sure you're dead. Oh, well, if you're gonna if you're gonna die, what's the last smell that you want to smell? They also said you wouldn't be able to smell in space because of the whole no air thing. Yeah, like of flow. Yeah, yeah, but it would be cool to be in it. I guess you would probably smell your own lungs actually if you were because the vacuum yeah, of space would pull the your air own out. blood and the air leaving your body. Yeah, that would smell terrible. When I sneeze, I'm like, what the hell? What's in there? You can smell your sneezes? If you sneeze really hard. You've never smelled your own, own, sne- own lungs when you sneeze really hard when you're sick? No. Oh, it's, don't, it's not good. <laughs> well, that's interesting because you can't smell your own nose. Do you know why you can't? Habituation. Yes. Also known as neural adaptation, baby. Ooh. Ooh, it happens with your eyes. It happens with your almost any fact of life. If you're doing something too much, like a... Did you know you can see your nose at all times? Yeah, I mean, look down. Just look down, it's there. Why don't you notice it all day? Neural adaptation, baby. Your brain just friggin' blocks it out. It's like... I'm tired of this I shit. I tell you all day for 24 straight hours that there's a point in your nose you can see all day. But I'm wasting your time. I'm wasting my time. Mm. Let's just skip it. It's sensory overload. We don't need that piece of information. Everyone look at your nose right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. You changed your life, didn't I? Well, your nose does the same thing. We go nose blind to things. Oh, You've seen that in the Scooby Glade commercial, right? Yeah. 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 You what? know what's funny? It was a um a term in our industry, the bar and restaurant supply, before Glade made it famous. Because I sell air fresheners and um, urinal screens and stuff like that. Hmm. It's a real term. Interesting. You know there are disorders that are related to oh. people that can't smell anything. There's not such a person, is there? It's called uh, anosmia. Oh, I'm screw that. Oh, come on, dude. you got to pronounce that better. Anosmia? Yeah, anosmia. And that's the condition. Do you know what a person's called? Anosmiatic? Oh, so close. It's an anosmic. Anosmic. That's pretty good. It's like insomniac. Isn't it's cool? hard not to say insomniac. Right, right. It's an anosmic. Anyway, an anosmic is a person who has unable to smell. Only three ways to get there, folks. Birth, injury, uh, and like old age brain issue. So the, the old age one is, uh, oh, damn it, presby, presby, uh, presbyosmia. Presbyterian. Like oh, pres, whoa, presbyosis what? is like the eyes, I think, but oh. presbyosmia. Mia. <laughs> it's hard to say. These things are difficult. We're educated, and it's still hard. Mm-hmm. We're really educated. <laughs> <laughs> we're so, oh, we're so smart. We are smart. <laughs> you can't believe it. But uh, yeah, I can't. I it's weird because the the sense of smell is linked to the sense of taste, right? So if you can't smell anything, I don't think that you can taste anything either. You can taste, but you can't taste well. Think, oh, like half of right, half of. I'll put it this way. So, so from what I read is, you're eating chicken and garlic, whatever marsala. Mm. I don't know. You're eating some delicious, flavorful food. Your tongue can taste the savory part. And what would the other part be? Maybe a, it's not sweet, it's not sour, it's not... It might just be savory. I have to open up the fish uh, graphic again. Where the hell are you? <laughs> what can you taste? Sweet, sour, salty, 
savory. Salty. So it's probably salty and savory, right? Your tongue can taste the salty and savory of this. But as you're eating a food, because your na nasal cavity is connected to your mouth, as you chew, fumes are going up into your nose and get into your olfactory bulb. So chances are the garlic that you're tasting is actually a smell. Um, the thyme, the garlic, the spice, it's usually actually a smell. That's why when they say you remember a taste from your childhood, you're more remembering the smell than the taste. Hmm. The smell is more unique. There's more smells than tastes. It's your sense of taste is really quite dull, I think. Kind of is. So if we're losing one sense, maybe taste. I yeah. Don't know. Although then could you not smell the same? I don't know. If they're... I'm not sure. People describe eating something without having the sense of smell as like eating styrofoam. Like it's just a texture. Yeah, I could see that. Did you know people who have an injury to their pre smelling capacity, whether they become... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say yeah, prefrontal, prefrontal cortex. cortex, but I don't know if that's true or not. It just sounds good. Uh, I think a lot of smelling happens in the anterior cortex. I thought it was the picture. Yeah, let me pull that up. I don't want to Temporal say Temporal lobe. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, no, no, all, all you. All you. Good. Anyway, people who have injuries to their smelling part of their brain, uh, right away, two things happen to them across the board. This is scientifically proven. They have no more appetite for food. Mm. They will eat. They're not like whatever, but they don't care as much about it. They don't have favorite foods anymore. And they don't want sex anymore. What the hell's wrong? Oh, wait a second. We're going to get into the other side of it, huh? That's what we're getting into. Oh, we? nice. We're there. Let's, that. Let's go to uh, Let's go pheromones to and sweat glands. Those pheromones. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yeah. Woo! So when you first are born, you have ecrine, ecrine, sweat, Ooh, brain, sweat glands. Are you sure? Do I have another? No. Oh, I... ecrine. Ecrine sweat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's sweat. So that's a natural thing. I think it's like feet have a lot of the sweat glands just naturally when you're first born. I have written down here bad, naughty part smells. Feet, armpit, uh, butthole. Feet, armpit, butthole, bad. Wait, I what's your definition? What's this category? Bad Think. body natural smells, I wrote. It's personal experience? Is this anecdotal? No, no, no. Like, that's where this person stinks. Like, you think of their, you know. Their feet are smelly, know? yeah. Yeah. But the feet are a natural thing from that? birth. I, well, I think the feet are, I'm going to say that my son's feet sweat more than anyone else. And there's something chemical there that causes my feet to sweat. So I don't know what the hell's happening, but Here. it's natural. So it's like, I think your 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 feet have most of them because he's real sweaty. I'm just gonna say anecdotal evidence there. And the other types of sweat glands, the sebaceous and the I think it's the apocrine sweat glands, they come during puberty. Puberty. So you have fatty sweat glands. Yeah, those sebaceous are your sex areas. Yeah, yeah, which are around your area, and then uh, the other ones in your armpit, and other areas too, but mainly your armpit. So it gets kind of weird, people doing scientific studies on what people can actually smell. You read this study about people being able to tell whether someone is genetically related to them. So, ah, incest. <laughs> yeah. Our sense of smell. Do you know why we have a sense of smell, folks? Sense of smell, folks. It's so we don't have incest. Go on. So they, yeah, they did a study on people that were uh, half siblings and full siblings, and they said that you can't tell the difference between someone who is just uh, like genetically different from you and your half sibling. So like, they're they're genetically far enough away that you can't smell them. Literally, you can't smell that they're half sibling or a stranger. Would you they're, say this is called the Westermark effect? I would say that if I could pull up the good. tab. Good, 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 good. <laughs> yeah, that is a. Uh... You are literally unattracted that people have your exact same smell. You actually, you're wired to like the smell of strangers erotically more so than anyone in your own family. That's icky to you. It, just it smells wrong. I don't know how to explain it. I tried. Yeah. They did the um, nature versus nurture thing too. Like if you grow up with somebody, you're naturally not predisposed to having sex with them. I guess that's the way to say it. Or you care for them yeah. deeply. It depends how you want to look at it. So you don't want to have sex with them. Like, but sure. even people that have like don't know who their siblings are, like they still can sense that they're not supposed to 
mix genes with them because their genes will probably not produce a viable Those baby. Those don't lie, baby. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. So your, your sense of smell can actually determine genes. It's weird. Weird. 25,000 genes make up the human condition, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. 2% of those are dedicated to smell alone. Huh. I think that's one out of every 30. Maybe I did the math wrong. One out of every 50. 2 yeah, that could be. Oh, uh, yeah, that would be. <laughs> math. Good eye. Math. Woo. Yes. Science. Anyway, so, um. There's another okay. story of a. This is uh, loosely related. So, there was a guy who fell asleep who had type 2 diabetes and something was wrong with his toes. Like when you get diabetes, your toes start to uh, lose circulation and they... Extremities. Yeah, yeah. Extremities don't circulate as well. Yeah. Yeah. The dog could smell that his extremities were no longer viable and the dog chewed off his toe. Chewed it off? I know about stories off. where they dial 911. That's pretty fascinating for a dog. Like, <laughs> yeah. off the phone and push 911, but to chew off the, the actual bed toe. This is Lassie in a call center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the That's dog chewed off his toe and actually saved him because of, like, once it get, becomes necrotic, once it becomes dead, it's it starts to filter dead, bad right. stuff into you. So the dog could smell wow. that his toe was necrotic and chopped it off. That's badass. That is pretty badass. They can also like they also say that well I don't know if this is scientific but dogs can smell when you have certain diseases or cancers. Yeah, I actually 100% heard this whether it's true or not. I was thinking cancer. Yeah. I don't I just think that's fascinating that like another animal knows when you have a debilitating disease and there are certain animals that can tell when you're about to die. There's a story of one of the like death, the cat. Ca death cat. Death cat, yeah. It would go to yeah. the person's bedside when they're within like two days of dying. And that's like, this is the mark of death. The, the cat has, has cometh. And that person would pass away within 24 or 48 hours. Was that cat like 12 or 14 or something ridiculous or something like that? He was super old. So do you think he knew his own death was coming? Could he smell his own death? He, he sat with himself. <laughs> the cat just curled up into an aruberous... <laughs> That's a snake eating its own tail. <laughs> Anyone wondering? An Aurorobus? 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 Aurora. One of those. One of those. One of those counts. <laughs> Aurorobus, which is a great CD from a technical I think it's band. Aurorobus. I think. Hmm. So there's also so we've been talking a lot about human smell, and hmm. um, before we get away from it, I just wanted to say. Broca was a scientist who did a lot of brain ah, research. Ah, Broca's region? Broca's region. Yeah. yeah, region, whatever. Cool guy. So anyway, right. he was judging what size these brain parts were compared to other mammals and stuff. What was interesting is that humans, our olfactory bulbs were much smaller than, say, mice, um, dogs, other animals. So they figured that we didn't we're, have very good senses of smell. We're inept. Especially because yeah. we're so good at vision. We're so good at the other stuff that, like, we have bad smell. Well, recently light has come into fruition that we don't use smell in the day-to-day. -day, but we have, as you mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, we have pretty good sense of smell. They think that it has less to do with the size of the brain portion as the neurons connected with that sense. Hmm. And our nose uses a similar amount percentage-wise of neurons as like elephants, mice, and a couple other animals. Dogs are still, I believe, ahead because they use smell for social cues and territorial things and health and food and all sorts of crap. But humans are not as bad as we thought we were. And that was Broca's fault because he was unlocking the brain and it was kind of just figured, ah, humans don't have a, a big percentage, so it's just not... Hmm. You were you seemed like you were researching because you wanted to. Piggyback I, I wanted to I wanted style. to piggyback that yes because I I wanted to see like yeah. which which mammals had the best sense of smell. You mentioned mice Go and elephants. It. I don't know that I have yeah. anything to add on those particularly. Okay. Uh, but. 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 I wanted to. So like I guess the sense of smell tells you whether something is putrid or rotten. 
and mm -hmm. it saves you from potentially eating something that will kill you. It also okay. serves as a, like a a sexual. So there's the incestual avoidance, but there's a sexual yeah. element too. Like with colognes, like people are trying to mix together certain flowers, certain certain magical aromas that allows you to become attracted or attractive to other people. It's a billion dollar industry every year across yeah. the world. Yeah. Did you know science is it's back and forth on this one, isn't it? Where do yeah. you fall? Uh, well, we did research on uh, attraction and I guess it depends uh -huh. on how close you are with the other person because it's like within like a foot and a half to two feet, you can smell them. But most people don't come within that range. So if you're trying to attract somebody that is just a passerby, a stranger. you're really trying to turn your own self on with your own cologne because hmm. your own horniness will come out as your own excitement visually. And they'll be able to pick you out and say, that person has something going on. So it's not real. It's mental. Unless they're an intimate partner who's always within that range. Hmm. And then I guess it flips where your cologne should probably turn that other person on so that you can get it on. Oh, that's so weird. I just thought of this. So someone who came into my store smelled like one of my ex-girlfriends because she wore the same perfume oh and it was a i want to say a tommy hill figure or something knockoff or maybe a new tommy hill figure whatever it was very similar to what she used to wear and i was i was more attracted to her taken aback you're like wait a second Ooh, i was like wow that's hey i remember oh yeah it oh, hit the right oh. notes for you it did. Now, that smell wouldn't have turned me on by itself. I wouldn't be like, whoa, what is that? Like, But it, it was a memory-based turn on. So bit. have you ever heard of a perfumer? Someone who is creating mm -hmm. perfumes? They have something called a perfume organ, which the person who created it said it was almost like smells have like different octaves, and there are certain smells that go together like chords. So the organ is literally oh, laid out like the three-tiered organ, and there are probably like hundreds of smells. So if someone's like combining them, they're almost like playing an organ to create the smell. Oh, God, that's wild. That is hot that's stuff. Sexy. Yeah. That's sexy. <laughs> yeah. And these people are, are certified. So it's like you have to be Rock become... stars, the rock stars of perfume, literally. You know, I kind of want to go to like a symposium with those people, and they'd be like... They like pull you aside, be like, check this out, and they just like they have like Do a little they, perfume. Is there just effing nonstop at these symposiums? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, this... even just to follow along with the whole theme, the the idea. If you <laughs> if you did happen to lay the most women using your perfume or cologne, I mean that's got a that's validity right there. That's a scientific study for science. A great testament. Yeah. A testament to your product. So they took this an extra level further with a, there was a novel and a film, which I'm sure you love, Perfume, the Story of a Murderer. There's a no, man... You, oh, you, you just We discussed this, I think. Yeah. Go for it. So the story goes that there was a man who was born with perfect smell. He could smell anything. Oh, perfect smell sounds terrible. So he became so enraptured by the smells... But the things he loved most were the living things because it was a transient thing and the smell would go away. And he'd be so distraught that he couldn't bring back the smell that he began to dive into perfumes and how to obtain smells from things. And he eventually starts to try to obtain smells from those he's attracted to. And the only way to do that would be to kill them, is the story kill of murder. But in the end, he starts to collect all these different smells and combine them in such a way that he can control people with the smells, and then he becomes so sexually attractive by just the smell alone that people just want him. They can't figure out why, but they just they want to dive right in and rip him apart. It's dark. Yeah, but it's also awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Well, in light of sexual smells and everything else, um. Do you um 
enjoy the smell like uh, some nice armpits, some sweat, some uh, groin smells, some pungent uh, sex organ smells. So I don't think I've ever liked an armpit smell. I could definitely agree with you on some of the sexual area smells. I guess if you're in sync, it smells good. I, mo not most of the time, but some of the time. Um, some other times it smells like an old hamburger or something. But, um... <laughs> so <it's used> to... <laughs> I had to say it. But sometimes it's not that bad. You're just like, huh. And then it's time to, to enjoy yourself. Have a feast. Join the buffet. Smorgasbord. I think. You do? <laughs> oh, I, I do. I, I know I do. So on a day-to-day -day basis, those smells are kind of repulsive, kind of salty, kind of uh, not doing it for me. I thought no, I no. want to smell. Yeah, yeah. But... When you're in the moment, or you're in heat, as we were to say, in the biz, they become hot. Uh, they become steamy. Good, good in the way a fart smells good. Your own fart. Hmm. Like it's my smell. That's my sexual. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like you got a piece of steak and you're just biting it. Yeah. And you can keep going, and you get lost in it. And there's a little hypnoticness to it. And there's you want to dig in there. You want to get into all the smells that no one else can get or tastes and feels and you just want to get lost and get wild and get crazy and there's you know I, earlier in the podcast I said smell is the most primitive sense in a way hmm. and then it's ah, I think it's related to that it's like you just feel it it turns me into an animal animalistic and that's what record, I was going for yeah exactly and that's how i feel and related to that unbeknownst to me they actually did some studies on this hmm. people who report or actually show better senses of smell they have better sex lives women who who are more sensitive to smell have more orgasms oh that's nice it's a true thing <laughs> it doesn't equate to men Apparently, men who smell better or men who don't smell better have just about the exact same amount of orgasms. Or a baseline, all of us. <laughs> Bully on them. But in general, people who, who are more sensitive to smell have a better sex life. Probably for what I just mentioned, because it's more... Your... <sighs> <laughs> to define it with out words. Mm. I can't mm. find words for it. I don't know how to explain it. So... My segue to this is that if you were to mm -hmm. get uh, get really down and dirty and then you actually procreate and make a baby and a woman is pregnant, she actually has a, a hyper sense of smell. That's Have you, true. Yeah. forgot about that. There are certain types of smells that you can tell when you're, you're hungry and your body needs certain proteins, certain salts, different things, that a pregnant woman can tell whether she's going to like something or not not only by smelling it, but smelling it like 30 feet away. Like she can tell whether someone's cooking something like the next house over and she goes, that's disgusting. And so like, is that a scientific thing? Like it's... It's proven, yeah. And I've seen it anecdotally yeah. too. Like my wife does not have to go anywhere near any type of food that she doesn't like when she's pregnant. She goes, that's disgusting. And she'll, she won't, she can't even stand it. She has to leave. That's fine. More for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I guess it's the it's kind of a weird thing though that we, like as as a pregnant woman who needs to figure out like what her baby needs, that's an essential thing to like figure out that you know I'll take these like essential amino acids and like that food doesn't have it so that is disgusting right now but this food does so that's most delicious I'm craving it so that feeds into like here's food cravings. Okay. Oh well, I thought it was all weird because. The smell we've been talking about is about molecules that go into our nose. Here we're talking about something that's not a few feet away. It's like 30 feet away, 40 feet away. Yeah. Is there a limit to human smell? I don't know that there is. I mean, downwind, is, is downwind a definable distance? The only thing no, I did I see is. was like when they're testing people for smells, they do up like a factor of two. 
so they like they range quite a bit it's almost like um oh, what's the like a exponential hyperbolic. curve yeah hyperbolic curve about like how well you can smell so they do a test on like a huge range to figure out how well you can smell those seven different types hmm. so it's a very it's an ill-defined science except when you get down to like uh gas chromatographs which use like a so like I'll, I'll just define how this parts works per million Is well it parts per million thing it's uh it's like so if you're shooting a particle through like space just straight ahead and you attach a piece of radiation to it a little ion to it and then charge it like that piece of ion will pull down that molecule and that molecule is like a certain weight it's like either light or heavy and it takes longer to pull it down so a gas chromatograph will attach to certain size and weight mass uh, particles and pull them down so you can tell how far they travel after they get pulled down Does that make sense i'm following you but what does it gotta do with keep going so in order to tell like whether um say there's like harmful things in the air so a gas chromatograph can tell you what uh what family of things is in the air it will tell you like different uh combinations of molecules so you'd be able to figure out that you have like an alcohol or, or like a, a different base of family oxalase or a mm -hmm. fentanyl or a this or, yeah i got you so where i'm going with is that this, like the other avenue of like scientific smells is like the the gas chromatograph feel it figure like scientifically figuring out what the smell is based on its base compounds other than a human being who does this for like all the time naturally passively mm -hmm. yeah. and can kind of figure it out based on the thousands of smells that they know tens of thousands yeah. hundreds of thousands so the science based on it is kind of strange too because you have like weird combinations of things that smell completely different it really depends on what the combination is so the science is kind of hazy it goes back to the smelling things and testing based on the different levels doubling exponentially so i lost you there hmm. But that's no, okay. no, I, I get you. I just didn't know where we were going from there. No, no, I totally get that. That's <coughs> essentially the humans are doing what science is trying to do right now. But yeah, they didn't. They don't have smell vision yet. So smell vision. The um the other funny thing is you kind of touched on it where um when we smell a thing like let's say coffee. I think I saw a YouTube video on this. Mm. We're smelling like so many different things it's different chemicals different compounds different acetyl metaphata um carbol acid atona i'm making up words now but they sound scientific <laughs> yeah all these smells go in here and go into your nose snell what did you say snell the snell a word is that the name it is it's that the is that the thing the name i saw just saw snell no it, it kind of sounds that's like awesome it. that's called your snell that's awesome Maybe not. Anyway, all these smells go in here, and they go in, and then your brain does essentially what you do for when you see a blurry vision. You don't look at individual photons coming back at you. Like, I can't look at photons pointing at a door. I have to see all of them. So it's a photon true. here, a photon here, a photon at the edge, a photon in the doorknob, a photon here, and I get an image that I my brain says, that's a door. Your nose does the same thing. I get this smell, this smell, there's this chemical reaction, there's this chemical, there's a compound here, there's a compound here, and it forms what I know is coffee. Perfect. I know if it's a stronger coffee or a lighter coffee, but I know it's coffee. But my brain doesn't break down the individuals. Like, I can't go, ooh, that's one-eighth coffee. Ooh, that's another particle that's in coffee. We yeah. just know the image coffee with our nose. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that it's the varying degrees of all the different components, but we can't tell the components apart. No, we're not that good. Maybe we could, I'm not sure, but maybe our brains is like, it's easier to just do this because you get a lot of uh, number seven of 15 all over the world. Let's not confuse the poor guy. Let's just wait till all of them are combined. This is coffee, pal. This is always coffee. So let's, so that we talked about perfumers. The other side of the coin is flavorists. So I read about this one flavorist. Her name was Pamela Lowe. Mm -hmm. She's the grandmother of Captain Crunch. 
So like the way they incorporate flavor into Captain Crunch is that you can't bake it that way. Like it's, it's just like physically impossible to bake Captain Crunch and make it taste that way. So she developed like an oil that she could apply to the outside of the Captain Crunch, like spray it on there so that you could taste the notes that are part of Captain Crunch. Like Captain Crunch has a certain smell, a certain taste, and I guarantee that almost everyone knows what that is, as long as they've eaten it once. I could taste it right now. Yeah. I'm kind of hungry. Captain Crunch, <laughs> sorry. Hmm. Hmm. But there's those entire divisions of people that instead of actually putting in like I think Captain Crunch was like a mixture of like uh, brown sugar and like oats and wheat or something but you can't bake it the way they do like mass man manufacturing so they have people that are dedicated to like recreating the smell of something the taste of something mm -hmm. using other chemicals that are, are easily applied which is and not copyrighted mm, I don't know if they're copyrighted or not I don't know if you can use that if you use that taste well, on like a candy bar or something I don't think you can recreate um, Coca-Cola and all that the Would you? formula the exact ingredients. is copyrighted. I, okay, so can you use the ingredients? Would it taste the same? What, in different quantities or something? In different order? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Could you Could you swap? Like, they're almost so essential that, like, the certain pieces are necessary in certain combinations and certain ratios that if you change one i don't know it like there are people with entire careers based on this so like what could you modify I, to make it taste I, the same i agree but then we just talked about what smell is and it's literally <coughs> <coughs> scent an aroma a smell <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that. <laughs> it's literally chance molecules that come off of a thing and bind to olfactory bulbs or receptors that go to the bulbs mm -hmm. but so the number of receptors hasn't changed the number of bulbs hasn't changed what's changed the amount of molecules that by chance work their way to there right you're gonna have to rephrase that question Smell is not changing with ingredients. That's true. So what changes? The amount of chemicals that bind with the amount of receptors in my nose? I think it's this. They probably use those sim like similar chemicals, like s the similarity of things that are in the same family and then mix them back together in a certain oil that gives off a fragrance. I think that's how right, they but trick what your body. In my nose. So what's going on in my nose for me to get... Uh, Captain Crunch smell. It's a different one than a knockoff brand that doesn't doesn't taste quite the same. Let's say they even use the same ingredients, but it just doesn't doesn't taste the same. Doesn't smell the same. What's happening? I don't know. I just know that it, it's got corn for crunch, oats for punch, and stays <laughs> crunchy even in milk. <laughs> so my guess is that ratio you were talking about directly relates to how many molecules of x bind with olfactory bulbs and molecules of y bind with olfactory bulbs and molecules of z bind with olfactory bulbs so that it could that trick your brain into is it. so important it makes my brain think one way but if the x y and z is off just by the amount it smells different hmm. i know it sounds stupid and common and basic but that's wild it is. So let's let's segue into things that smell like other things to pretend Go ahead. for some reason. So uh, like a corpse flower, a carry-on flower, it smells like dead meat. I like that. And it's a, a biological advantage because it actually brings like flies and different insects to it to pollinate. And no other animals want to eat it. Exactly. So it protects it while it's How convenient. fornicating at the same time. Sorry. But it's kind of, it's bizarre though, because how does a plant know to mimic dead flesh of an animal? Do you think, just 
one by chance did that and it reproduced so much i mean i don't know it's like yeah just randomly like genetically modified mutated itself to i mean it's mm-hmm. it's probably not like choosing to do so it just happens to be Clearly not by that chance, it fits it, a it, certain it, thing right. yeah I don't, I, I just, I don't, that's just something that's amazing that there exists something that puts off that pungent and odor mm-hmm. that it survived. I guess if it just happens once, it's like that one flower is going to be good enough for, because that's such an evolutionary advantage. It's going to be good forever. Not forever. Well, until another eventually, flower comes back. Eventually, like, if we, no, until we run out of meat and people want to eat meat and all animals are like, ooh, vegetarian. Hmm. Vultures are just chowing down on corpse flowers. So did you That's get into? Coming. Did you get into like skunks? No, I didn't. Why is that? Is that effective on just us mammals or every animal or what? Ooh, I was hoping you got into skunks. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping you did because I'm curious. No, I did not. No, I don't. I'm blanking on it. We're gonna skip over that. And I'm winding down, folks. You so are winding sum it up, down. I, I did. I, I, I am. Listen. That's okay. Where I wanted to end this is that smell is super interesting for another reason. So um, Vsauce did an episode, and he broke down the word olfactory, right? Check out his podcast. He watches ours. He's one of his favorites. Anyway, he's he's pretty good. He's, he's coming up through the ranks. He's a pretty good guy. Check him out if you're in the little podcast. Um, olfactory. Odor makes up the first part, ol, O-L. They think it's based on odor and hmm. factory um, to make. What's weird is olfactory doesn't make the smells, right? Hmm. It kind of does. Because we're not taking these molecules and just shooting them all the way up into our brain. We're taking these molecules absorbing them into our our olfactory bulbs and olfactory receptors and they make our receptors react a certain way diffuses electrons differently travels up the chain differently gives us different impulses and then that sends a message to our brain about how something smells so really we still don't know how anything smells it's coming into our body we're reacting to it and it's our version of smell Hmm. You know what I mean? I guess you could almost say about any sense, but with smell, it's extra weird because when you smell something, it becomes part of you. If I smell Dan's fart, you're now me. Uh, just a little bit. A little bit of him just got in my body, in my nose. That's the other reason it's so sexual, too. If you smell someone's sex, if you smell someone's <laughs> smell sweat, my farts, but. You're, you're you're smelling them. Pieces of them are going up into your body. And you're absorbing it and reacting to it. Something primal about it, something sexy about it, something wild about it. And you're winding down, but I'm going to add an aside. <laughs> Please do. Uh, so a skunk's, uh, skunks smell anal glands. Mm-hmm. They produce a theol. And a the theol is actually what they call a mercaptan. And a mercaptan is like a form of an oniony smell, which humans actually produce naturally. So if you smell like a garlic, that's like a base element of what the skunk is spraying you with. It's kind of bizarre. It's concentrated? Yeah. And the theol is a bunch of stuff that probably no one cares about. But they also said that the home remedies are ineffective. The Humane Society... Uh tomato paste and all that, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Humane Society of the United States recommends treating dogs or yourself if you get sprayed. Hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and dishwashing liquid. That's the solution huh. to disinfect. It sounds the like smell. a kid's volcano, but okay. I guess so. Peroxide and baking soda, and then dishwashing. Oh, I thought you said vinegar. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think the peroxide will do the same thing. Make... Uh, I think they're both basic, aren't they? Though. You're basic. I don't know. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for joining us. Today we talked about the anterior cingulate cortex, 
We yep. talked about how incest happens every single day. <laughs> incest. It smells like incest in here. But you can avoid incest by smelling your partner. Pheromones, are they real or are they not real? Hmm. No, how close sure. do you have to get? 67% of people enjoy their own farts. Mm. Mm. I know I do. I do as well. People who enjoy smells and have more sensitive smells have lots of sex, folks. So start Orgasms. sniffing them roses and sniffing them vajays. Peepees. I thought you said orgasms. So, like, they might not have enough That's sex, it. but when they have sex, they have a bunch of orgasms. But I guess they, they have know? more sex because they like sex more. Right? Women. I don't know. Who knows? It's the faculty or power of perceiving odors, folks. And it smells like it stinks, but it doesn't. It's all about leggings. Mm -hmm. It's all about the olfactory mucosa. <clears throat> Damn. It's all about the mucus nerve receptors and the olfactory area. Is it Bronca's area? area? The mm. limbic system? Mm. Your memories? Mm. Pamela Lowe. Captain Crunch, baby. Perfumers. Perfume story of a murderer. Perfume we organ. talked about nasal congestion, smoking, brain injury, and aging. <clears throat> they all amp in this area. That's not what we were all about. Mm. Cologne. Loose, folks. Sebaceous glands. Start getting out there and sniffing weird shit. Natural <laughs> gas? Boom. Light a match. See how that smells. Lighter fluid? Sniff it. Glue? Sniff it. Get high off anything. I don't care. Sniff stuff. Go up to a girl and sniff her. She's not going to be bothered. That's terrible. Don't do that. You're a creepo. Yeah. So keep your sniffer in your pants, folks. That's our motto. If you can't adhere to that, maybe you uh, rethink everything. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for donating to the socials. Thanks for hitting up our like button. Thanks for hitting up the retweets. Thanks for hitting the heart. Thanks for sniffing on us. We should make one for a sniff. Like, checked you out. Hey, what's yeah. going on? Just checking the air near you. Thanks, folks, for checking on us. We appreciate the F bomb out of it. And we like you. We like you a lot. Thanks. Tune in next year. Did you freeze? No. Good night.